The San Diego Bay is one of California's largest bays, and it's of tremendous economic importance to the city, state, and national government. Recreational boaters, cruise lines, shipyards, and the Navy all share its resources. On this day, we find another Scripps research team underway to sites where they are conducting biological experiments on the effects of pollutants on marine life at six locations in San Diego Bay. Dimitri Dehane, a postdoctoral fellow from Belgium, leads the team. He is testing a research strategy that involves placing a common species of starfish from clean ocean areas into the bay, which contains pollutants from urban and industrial sources. The San Diego Bay has been used by the U.S. Navy uh, as a big harbor and shipyard. As you can see here, we have big boats everywhere. San Diego Bay, therefore, is kind of polluted, and uh, my research aims to see whether um, the back of the bay is more polluted than the, the outside of the bay. What I did for my research, I transplanted brittle stars, which is kind of a starfish, in cages, and I put them in different stations along the bay, and I will collect them every week during two months and see whether uh, they accumulate pollutants, whether first they survive, and also see if they are a good indicator of the pollution in the San Diego Bay. Dimitri and dive partner Phil Jondro suit up. Ready? Okay. All right. One, two, three. They swim along the boat line to the surface buoy with the Coronado Bay Bridge in the background. Underwater, they dive along the buoy's anchor chain to the bottom some 35 feet below. A plastic pipe grid holds the cages in place. A piece of mesh is removed. It has collected particles from the seawater directly above the cage that contains the brittle stars. The cages are cut free, kicking up a plume of the thick, loose sediments and placed into the dive bag. Part of the study is to measure the recently accumulated sediments, including levels of heavy metals in the presence of microorganisms. Another aspect is to withdraw pore water, the water that is saturated into the seafloor sediments, for chemical and biological analysis. Measurements are also made of the water chemistry, temperature, salinity, and turbidity from the bottom to the surface. This site survey completed for the day, the divers return to their boat. Later that night in the laboratory, Dimitri carefully opens the mesh cages to recover the brittle stars. The objective now is to evaluate each animal's exposure to pollutants by determining the types and quantities of materials in their tissues. Some brittle stars create luminescence, as this one does when chemically stimulated. The hypothesis is that the amount of bioluminescence reveals levels of toxicity. The next series of tests require the brittle star to be dissected, so Dimitri anesthetizes the animal and removes each arm so that he can analyze the effects of pollution on the light-producing cells. These arms are placed into a glass tube and put into an instrument called a luminometer that can accurately measure the light from the arms. A chemical is injected to stimulate light production. The numbers are the number of photons emitted. Other tests analyze the chemical content of tissue samples. Dehane discusses the results. I put the brittle stars in different areas in the bay, and uh, they didn't survive everywhere. In the back of the bay, the brittle stars did very well, and they didn't die and they accumulated only a little of the pollutants. Whereas when you look at the sediment, the sediment contains a lot of pollutants. 
but the pollutants are in the sediment and are not bioavailable to the brittle star. And that's something very clear when you go in the bay, the back of the bay is very turbid and you have a lot of suspension, a lot of particles in the water, which helps the pollutant to absorb to the particle and to sink into the sediment. So in the, in the mouth of the bay, the water is clear and you don't have a lot of sediment. So the pollutants that are there don't have the opportunity to sink and to be attached to the sediment. So they will go into the organisms. And so the organisms will show a high level of pollutants in their tissue and they will be exposed to toxicity by that way. The mouth of the bay is more toxic than the back of the bay, but the amount of pollutants are different. You have more pollutants in the back, less in the mouth, but in terms of what is available, that is, there is a huge difference. In the mouth of the bay, the pollutants, if, even if you have much lower level of pollutants, they are all bioavailable and they can be ingested by the organism, which makes a big problem. Dehane's experiment points out the complexity of understanding the direct impacts of industrial pollutants on specific marine species and how localized water circulation and other factors can interact with these effects.